It has been a hot minute since I last gave you a proper update on my four foot reef tank. So I'm gonna put that right today and it starts right now. Now Montipora is often said to be the best beginner SPS coral and I now have first hand experience of just how hardy it can be. Two months ago I pulled out my middle island and hacked away my colony of Tropic Thunder Monty. I got 90% of it off and the bits that were left behind had been completely stripped of any flesh, which I hoped meant the bits I missed wouldn't survive. Fast forward eight weeks though, and it's already returning to haunt me. There's flesh growing back over what I thought was basically dead coral, and as if that's not bad enough, it's even growing in the shape of the minion of the Antichrist. It is the freakiest thing I've ever seen, and I swear to God I've woken up in the middle of the night and found it next to my bed, staring straight at me and stroking my head. And while most corals recover from far worse than you think in good water conditions, my water has been surprisingly off base lately. And I lost three established SPS corals in the space of a few months. And the cause turned out to be the most simple thing of all, salinity. For the last few months, I've been slowly trying to increase my salinity as I thought it had dropped to a little under 1.025 and I wanted it to sit at 1.026. But I was relying on my salinity probe to make adjustments without calibrating the probe. So it turns out it was giving me a false reading. When I calibrated the probe, then checked that against a freshly calibrated HANA checker and a refractometer, my true salinity was 1.029. So I slowly brought it back down to 1.026 over the course of a week, and now everything is looking good again. Now I'd been planning on selling the colonies I lost, so while I've lost a bit of money, fortunately I didn't lose any of my favorite corals. And if I'd lost my prized strawberry shortcake colony, I would have been an uncontrollable blubbering mess. Now in good old blighty, we have of course been battling the heat apocalypse this summer. And temperatures hit 40 degrees C or 104 Fahrenheit, which is the hottest temperature in the history of the country. But my tank temperature only increased by a maximum of 0.6 degrees C. On the hottest days, I took extreme steps to stop the sun's heat getting into the house in the first place. But the rest of the time, I just had windows and blinds shut and used two house fans for evaporative cooling. Hobby grade fans do a surprisingly good job considering how small they are, but I found house fans to be vastly superior and I've settled on this nine inch hydroponic fan, which is fantastic if a little aesthetically challenged. And along with adding enormous fans to my tank, I've also bought myself an extra powerhead in the form of the Red Sea Reef Wave 45. My four MP40s are great, but because you can't angle them, they don't hit every spot in my tank, so I'm using this to boost flow. These still points in my tank are in the bottom corners and in the center of the tank at the back. And in an ideal world, I'd actually move the Reef Wave to the right and have a second one alongside it to create more flow in the bottom corners. But it already looks ridiculous as it is, so I'll probably end up with the Reef Wave at the far end of the tank and the MP40s flanking it, maybe halfway down the tank. For now though, it's staying put and I'll admit it makes the tank look a bit silly, but I'll probably end up moving it in a couple of times when I replace part of my escape. I've been unhappy with my coral choices on the island to the right for a while now, and I finally decided to pull that rock out, set all of the corals, and replace it with a new island. And I've ordered a bespoke rockscape that should look something like one of these islands. Having this will let me scape the corals out much better, and it will mean I can choose only the spiciest aquapora frags, so I end up with an all killer, no filler coral island. And reef keeping is all about the journey anyway, so I don't mind taking one step back to take two steps forward, or rather 10 steps back to take 11 forward. Now because I'm dosing the magic sauce that is Kalkwasser, I'm expecting any new corals I buy to grow super fast. But I'm also currently addressing the other potential growth inhibitor in my tank, phosphate. It's currently sitting at around 0.31, but I'll be using Roafoss to try to bring it down to below 0.1 for a sustained period of time. But that has been the plan for four years, and in the past I've been too lazy to keep it up. So this time I'm using this little TMC reactor, which is very easy to slip out and replace the Roafoss. And I'm gonna change it out on the first of each month so I don't forget to do it regularly. And finally, in fish news, I've sadly had to replace my one spot fox face. Despite my best efforts of hand feeding the old boy, he recently passed away. And now I'm a huge fan of algae eating fish, so I moved quickly to get what is, in my opinion, the coolest looking rabbit fish in the hobby, a two barred rabbit fish. And I've started mixing up my feeding in an effort to improve the diet of my remaining fish. And that includes spirulina flakes, which all of my fish, including the new guy, chow down on with gusto. 
the new rabbit fish will also get weekly nori strips as well as the usual meat fest of various types of shrimp. And I'm planning on adding a captive bred regal angel fish soon, so the more food I can throw in the better, as regal angels can be a little tricky to get to eat at first. By reputation, regal angels are a risk with LPS and zoas, and while I do have a chalice and a torch coral, I don't think they're likely meal candidates for him. And if he wants to eat my zoas, he'll have to pry them from the cold dead fins of the clownfish who guard them with their lives. There is a chance he'll nip at the polyps of my SPS corals, but from what I can make out, that's a pretty slim chance, and my sole Acan colony is a far more likely target for nibblage, so I'll keep an eye on that to see how it goes. Now 50 months is probably the point at which most tanks are chock full of established coral colonies that are growing like weeds. And while I do have some corals that fit that bill, my minuscule attention span means I continue to remove all of my grown out corals when I get bored of them. Which as many of you will know by now, is typical reef dog behaviour. And speaking of typical reef dog behaviour, I'm also considering changing out my lights again, but I'll save that treat for another video. If you enjoyed the video then give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week and until next time, happy reefing.